Hello and welcome back to our journey of chemistry. It is all that matters. And today we're going to continue with ionic compounds, but today we're going to talk about transition metals. And we introduced that briefly in the last video, but uh, let's go a little bit more in depth and talk about these transition metals and their charges and how they work in ionic bonds. So when we talk about ionic bonds, once again we're talking about electrochemical bonds formed between a metal which is a cation and a nonmetal, which is an anion. Cations being positive, nonmetals non being negative. Now we're going to focus today on the transition metals, primarily this group in what we've come to refer to as the D block. And typically we look at the transition metals and we look at the valence shell and we realize they have two electrons in the S. Um, and typically they would become plus two anions, but in many cases these transition, transition metals will form more than one type of ion. So here is the typical list that we will use for our class of the transition metals <clears throat> that have various ion states. So here we have copper, and copper can come in a positive one charge or a positive two charge and there are two ways of naming. There's what is called the stock naming system and that's briefly what I told you about in the last video where you use a Roman numeral to signify the charge. So copper 1 would have a Cu plus 1 symbol while copper 2 would have the Cu plus 2 symbol. But um, what we've come to refer to as the common name is actually cuprous for the plus one ion and cupric for the plus two ion. Now what we'll notice is the ion with the lesser charge will always end in OUS and the ion with the higher charge will always end in IC. So we notice cuprous, cupric. Plus one for cuprous, plus two for cupric. Iron two is ferrous, which is the Fe plus two ion. Iron three is also known as ferric, which is Fe plus three. We see that tin comes in two varieties, the tin two, stannous, and tin four, stannic. The stannous is plus two in charge, the stannic is plus four in charge. Chromium comes in two varieties, plus two and and also in a plus three form, chromium three is chromic, chromium two is chromus. We also have manganese two and manganese three. Mang manganus is the Mn plus two, manganic is Mn plus three. Mercury is a strange one in that it both of its ions have a plus two charge, but one comes as a binary or diatomic HG2, the other comes as HG. Now when we talk about mercury 1 that is mercurus and that is the HG2 plus 2 and then there's mercury, uh, mercury 2 which is mercuric and that's the HG plus 2. Lead has two varieties, 2 and 4, plumbus and plumbic, plumbus being the plus 2, plumbic being the plus 4. Cobalt also has two varieties, two and three, cobaltus and cobaltic, and then gold is gold two, aurus, and gold three, auric. So let's look at how these might form ionic bonds in compound. So here we have tin, Sn plus two, combining with chloride, Cl minus one, and we get tin chloride. Now, because we're using the plus 2, we know that the tin is tin Roman numeral 2 chloride, or it could also be stannic chloride. So let's look at another example. Here we have iron in its plus 3 form and oxygen minus 2. Well, in order for these two to bond, we know that we, need, we will need 2 of the plus 3 to combine with three of the minus two so that their charges will, will balance at six. So the molecule is actually Fe2O3. When we name this molecule, we could name it in its stock name, iron three oxide, because we're using the plus 
3 ion, or we could name it in its common name, ferrous oxide, F-E-R-R-O-U-S, um, ferrous oxide representing the plus 3 ion of iron. And let's look at one more example. So our next and last example of this would be PBS, which would be PB plus 2 and S minus 2, so we have lead and sulfide. And again, that forms the molecule compound PBS. And we know that lead is a plus 2 ion, so it's lead 2 sulfide, or in its common name, that would be plumbus sulfide. So I have two P, uh, PDFs for you available on the SOFIA, and I'd like you to go ahead and print those both out. One asks you to take the name and turn it into a formula, and the other asks you to take the name and put it in uh, the formula and then put it into its name. And I have told you uh, on that PDF whether to name it as stock using the Roman numeral or common using its OUS or IC suffix to represent the charge. So go ahead and print those two out. Um, work out your names and formulas and then come back to see how you did. So welcome back and let's see how you did with your naming and formulas. So I'm going to just drag this over and see what we've got here. So we've got uh, stannous chloride. Stannous would be tin in its plus two form and chloride would be negative one giving us a formula of SNCl2. Lead for iodide, lead would be plus four, iodide is minus one so you need four iodides so PBI4. Iron two oxide, iron is in its plus two form, oxide is minus two so they are one to one FeO. Ferric oxide, uh, ferric tells us that iron is plus three Oxide is minus 2, so they are balanced at Fe2O3. Tin for sulfide. Tin is plus 4. Sulfide is minus 2, so you need two of the sulfides, making it SNS2. Copper 1 chloride is plus 1 and minus 1, so they go together 1 to 1. Copper chloride. And then we have iron 3 sulfide, very similar to ferric oxide, so it would be Fe2S3. Mercurus is the Hg2 form. It has a plus 2 charge. Chlorine has a minus 1 charge, so Ag, Hg2Cl2. Chromic oxide, Cr2O3. Cupric sulfide. Cupric is the plus 2 form of copper, so that would be Cus. And lead to iodide. PBI2. So let's see how we did on the naming. So here we have the answers to the naming and remember stock means the Roman numeral to signify the charge, common means the suffix OUS or IC to identify the charge and here we have manganese fluoride and it is stock so since the F Fluoride is negative 1 and there are two of them. We know the manganese has to be Roman numeral 2 in order for plus 2 and minus 2 to balance. Chromous sulfide, um, chromi uh, chromium comes in a plus 2 form and when it is 1 to 1 with sulfide, which is negative 2, we would use chromus. FeBr2 is iron 2 bromide. In this case, bromide is negative 1, but because there are two of them, we know the iron is the plus 2 form. Uh, iron 3, or FeI3, would be iron, and in this case, since the iodide is negative 1, and we have three atoms of the negative 1, we know that the iron is plus 3, which uses the suffix IC, so it is the ferric iodide. Here we have mercuric oxide. This is the merc mercury Hg without the subscript 2. And then we have tin 2 sulfide, copper 2 chloride, auric sulfide, 
manganous iodide and for lead the stock form for iodide being 4 would be lead 4 iodide. So hopefully this clarified a little bit more how the transition metals can have more than one ionic charge and how we would use either of the naming systems whether it be common using the OUS or stock using the Roman numeral and keep working on your chemistry.